Okay, well, we're privileged today to have as a guest, Dr. Gabriel Rutten, MD from Holland. Say hello, Gabriel. Hello, Barry. And, <laughs> and our topic today is, is one I think just about any newcomer to our course or anybody who's just getting started with us really needs to understand. And that's how to be thorough with our process. I think, I think, Gabriel, you and I have both noticed that, especially newcomers, might want to do one of our personal peace procedures where, where we bring an unseen therapist for a specific event or physical issue or something. And we tend to want to think, well, okay, we're going to do this and it's all got to go away right now. You know, one session. Okay. And they get relief and they think that's all there is. But that's not quite true. Yes? Yes. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yes, talk, because... Yeah. Go ahead. Hmm? No, go you ahead. First. No, you first. No, I, I was going to say talk about that a little bit. Okay, all right, all right. Um, yes, if you if you look at what, what, what needs to happen, um, you really need to get used to the process and trust the process and get used to handing it over, you know, putting it on the table for unseen therapists to work on it. What I have noticed that some people um, either tend to sort of, you know, be very active during the personal peace process. They are thinking about the problem. They're talking to themselves. They're, they they want to, you know, resolve it and feel very peaceful because they know, you know, you tend to end up feeling very peaceful. So what I've noticed um, is when... I work with a client and they do the the personal peace procedure then all of a sudden these eyes go open and they say it's done it's 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 finished and yeah me go, <laughs> meaning i feel peaceful for the moment that must be all there is yes. and, exactly, and exactly. that sometimes that might be true by the way sometimes it might be true but it all too happen. often yeah all too often all too often uh, no, there's more there, and that's why we need to be thorough, and that's where the real student gets to be thorough with these things. We really clean house on it. Exactly. And so it doesn't, here's, and so on. So go ahead. And here's the thing. So first you need to establish what is the specific moment I need to work on, and it needs to be nice, you know, one crescendo and all that, but it still has details and maybe different emotions. So you start with associating yourself in the moment, reliving the moment, and then you know what you feel, you know what the emotions are, you know what numbers you would give them the emotions between zero and 10. For example, suppose you work in a situation where you're really angry at a nine, and that, you know, sort of fills the whole screen. So let's start with this anger of a nine. Then we enter the personal peace procedure. Um, Anything can happen, and if you if you want to use a metaphor, that's beautiful and fine. But you can also just keep yourself in a loving state. Some people see colors; others spontaneously see things or hear hear something. But you don't have to actively do something. If something happens, it's fine. But what I've noticed is um, I'm thinking of a particular. Um, uh, man I worked with we started with a nine and then his eyes he opened his eyes and said um, I'm peaceful now and I said well let's test after the personal peace procedure the personal peace procedure just you know just let it happen the way it happens uh, and then we test so I asked him again close your eyes please step back into this moment pretend it is happening right now and feel for me how is the anger now and then it was quite a little while and he said, well, the anger is a five now. So we did another round, another personal peace procedure, because these are all aspects. So we worked on the anger and then there was some other stuff. And there was a little moment before that and a little moment after that in this little uh, specific event that we used. So basically what I'm trying to point out is um, even though unseen therapist doesn't need the details doesn't need anything basically you just need she just needs your willingness to hand over to her what you want to have resolved we however 
have a an ego. An ego is a sneaky bastard. And if ego either is able to hold on to whatever you know emotions or charge you have in a situation, ego loves that. So it will either hold, really hold on to whatever is still there or try to fool you that you need to do this in one little meditation or personal peace procedure. Yeah, so that's is, that. I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? I, no, no, no. You have no. More? Okay. Well, the yeah, the, that's a, kind of an advanced topic and not everybody listening in is really quite where this ego thing is. But let's talk about that for a minute. Because one of the things in my book that I talk about a lot, my book, The Unseen Therapist, but which, by the way, there's a link to the free copy, you know, below this video. Um, but one of the things I, I talk about in there is the fact that that we are all one. We, we have believed uh, that we are separate from each other, but that's impossible. Quantum physics proves it and, and so on. We are all connected into one, but it just does not appear that way. And our ego, the way we define it here, is this similar to this belief in separation. And it does not want to let go of that. So if we are taking an anger issue like you're talking about, Gabrielle, and we're shifting it from a nine anger down to, to anything lower, um, ego doesn't like that because that's, that's, that's moving us towards oneness towards connectedness towards love and the ego is very clever it will distract you um it will it, in your example it will say well this, this one meta this one system with the personal peace procedure this one session well that's all you need that's all you need okay <laughs> not true that's why we're kind of running around the barn door here and and uh, you know making sure ego <laughs> uh, doesn't get so much in the way. We're going to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. We're going to look for smaller things and little bitty stuff. And it went from a nine to a five. Well, why is it still a five? We need to know that. Okay, what's oh well? No, 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 I was angry, but now I feel guilty. Well, okay, we're not done yet, are we? Okay, now I'm I'm rambling on a bit, but. I just want to talk about that a little bit about ego, just so everybody understands yeah. ego is in the way here. That's why we need to be thorough. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, indeed. And so if, if, you know, in your specific moment, you start off with a anger at a nine, either just the anger goes down to a five and then even lower, or the, it changes to another emotion because there's not just anger. There's also whatever else there is. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is don't being thorough does, doesn't mean you have to, you know, pack it all in one personal piece procedure and then done with, be done with it. Take your time, yeah. do the personal piece procedure, then test, step back into the moment, whatever is still there, do another round be patient with yourself. It's fine. You can do three yeah. rounds. Why not? You can do four yeah. rounds. And, and you can do one tomorrow and next week. Or to, other, as you keep testing this, you you're, you may find other issues coming up that is not apparent at the moment during this personal peace procedure. Shows up later. You always want to be diligent and so on. The, the, the phrase I tend to use here is I never, this is had, why we want to be thorough, because I never want to be fooled by a temporary result. And it can happen. It happens much more often than people think. Much more often than they think. That's why we need to be thorough, thorough, thorough. Uh, can we talk about, about the, the, um, the use of metaphors or not metaphors? I mean, we talked about that previously before the recording. I would like to add one little thing to what you just said, if I may. Sure. Because... You know, testing is absolutely paramount. It's so important to test. However, and I would like to point out that one specific moment you need to test immediately. Just test because you need to work until the uh, charge is zero. And then really, you know, try your best and see whether you can activate anything anymore. In this one particular moment, if you're working on a problem, say, 
uh, low self-esteem, you really obviously want to do it again tomorrow with a different specific moment and do that again and keep testing until you feel and you, your self-esteem is improving. But I just want to point out that one specific moment, don't stop until it's zero, no charge. Okay, got it. <laughs> now, the metaphor topic, do we need it, not need it? Let, let, me, let, let me speak for a moment on that. Because one of the things that I, I do um, is I, in fact, I did it in my book. You'll find it in the advanced lessons and this kind of thing. I, I typically use metaphors. And that's so that, so that people, especially newcomers, that are doing this, they they tend to want in a personal peace procedure, they eventually get to a point where, ah, we're going to hand this over to unseen therapists. Now, at that point, we actually have a fork in the road. We can do one of two things. We can either just be quiet and let her do it. But many people, especially newcomers, at least I find, will feel like they failed when they do that because this chatter that comes on and you know everybody just about everybody does it okay and they think there's competing thoughts and nothing is really happening and they think they failed and all of that well we're going to get to that in a moment they didn't really fail but i, I want to before we get to why they didn't fail the other way to go about this is to create metaphors which is what i i do and we have all kinds of metaphors you know the one in my book is an unwanted vibration around your heart. A gentle breeze comes in from unseen therapists. And been very effective. Been very effective. I, I have other, many, many others. You can make up your own. We have the grand ballroom and the lake of love and the, even a car wash. We have all kinds of different metaphors of volcanoes and rain coming over them and all kinds of things. Those metaphors, this is important to understand art for the unseen therapist. She doesn't need our metaphor. <laughs> she doesn't need to have us tell her what to do. Okay. Those metaphors are for us. So we have some sense we are creating about how this is happening. Here's a gentle breeze coming in my unwanted vibration around my heart, which is my emotional responses fading. So it gives us a sense of doing something in it. Okay. That's what it said, but you don't have to have it. Now, mm. let's shift, because I know you have a comment on this, Gabrielle, because you like to do this a lot, where you don't use the metaphor so much, you have people just be quiet. When they say, I think I failed because I didn't connect to unseen therapists, and I had all these other thoughts, and I was worried about this or whatever, okay? Not really the case, is it? No, not really okay. the case. So tell but, us about that. Why isn't yeah, that really the case? Well, because if, after they've said that, because that happens to me too, I said, well, let's test this. And again, we don't, you know, unseen therapist doesn't, doesn't need anything tested, but we do. So I ask him, close your eyes, step into this moment, pretend it's happening right now. And how is it now? And then the charge is a lot less or sometimes even zero. In other words, even though they were worried about this personal peace procedure not going the way it should be going, it, there's a big change. Stuff happened. Yeah. And, and that is so hard, especially for a newcomer, to put their head around because they're thinking they've got to do it right. I mean, built into this often is, well, I'm, we're going to be accessing the... Uh, spiritual realm we're going to be talking to unseen therapists to god i better do this right you know and so they're sitting there trying to do it right and i'm not criticizing it's just what people do it's human nature right? and competing thoughts come in oh i'm failing i'm not doing it yet when you test it <laughs> when you test it the nine or ten or eight or whatever it was it started with is almost always improved, <laughs> yes. despite all of that, okay? Exactly. Very important to get that, really yes. important to get that, okay? The only way to assess whether something happened is to test properly. So don't, don't do it during the personal peace procedure. Just, you know, let it happen. It's, it's a flexible process. So I do indeed 
um, quite often instruct uh, people just either stay in your in your loving moment in a in a very nice feeling or if you if you want a metaphor let that happen but don't be too active just relax sit back and enjoy the ride so to speak um big misunderstanding that during a meditation or personal peace procedure your mind your ego mind isn't monkey mind as the uh, the, the zen buddhists would call it um is quiet not at all the only thing you do is just you know let it happen and sort of gently bring yourself back in a loving feeling or so gently just let it go again that's all you need to do so it's a very i would say flexible and sort of forgiving process because it's happening anyway yeah it is flexible in that regard but it, it, it's very powerful I mean, I, I put the metaphors in. Many people use them. I like to use them myself and so on. But it's very powerful to not use the metaphor. Let your mind just do whatever it's going to do, okay? All that stuff that it does. And then when you're done, test again. And lo and behold, even though you didn't do it right, at least according to your assessment of it, <laughs> here's the yes. result anyway, okay? Yes. Now that's powerful. That's, that that tells you unseen therapist is always giving you guidance always always we're just not listening no but if we'll put and stuff on the table which we're doing with a personal peace procedure and asking for help here it comes to the extent of course that we put it on the table we can always hide stuff and forget stuff and repress stuff and you know that's where some of our our more advanced skills come in you know to put it on the table but Right. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very powerful, very important. Well, and this also explains why even if you're like in company and you're not, there's no time or room to sort of sit down and be quiet and do the proper personal peace procedure. Even in those circumstances, people you sort of ask, just help me here or uh, I need your help or just ask unseen therapist for help and then stuff happens too. Which makes yeah. sense because unseen therapist doesn't need to concentrate, doesn't need any silence to do anything. We do, we think. Yeah, yeah. we we think we do. Yes, 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 yes. That, that's true. That's very true. So the personal peace procedure that I developed is for us to understand what's happening in our own, in a way that we can understand. But the more advanced you get in this, the less you need the training wheels. Yes. Okay. And I do okay. not, I just wanna, I, if I may, I just want to um, point out that it is a type of meditation. And if you look at meditation, the really, really big difference between meditation and working with unseen therapists and doing the personal peace procedure, um, amongst other things, is the fact that you focus on the specific event that you want to resolve. And after the peace and peace procedure, you test what is happening. Now, this is unique, absolutely yeah. unique, and makes it a very powerful tool. Because, you know, in general, meditation is very um, healthy to do. It's very good to do. However, it's a general relaxation. And if you're really upset about somebody and you step away from your little meditation cushion go outside and meet that person you'll you'll be upset again but yeah. if you use um unseen therapist and optimal eft to really work on these specific moments with this person and meet him then the, you will notice the difference yeah i think a way to say that is that is that this is a focused meditation would that fit? Does that fit for you? A focused meditation, yes. focused on a particular goal. Combined with exposure. Yeah. So okay. if, if you look at the literature of how to uh, effectively work on traumatic experiences, you need a little bit of exposure in, in the sense that you need to relive it or sort of activate what happened in this particular moment why was i upset what what happened in my stress reaction so the exposure is important and then it's a focused meditation with testing afterwards makes it absolutely 
unique in the yeah. world. Yeah. Well, I tend to think it's unique because I don't know of anything else like it, but maybe there is something else someplace somehow. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Gabrielle, anything else you want to add? No, I think we basically, yeah, I think we tackled this subject. Yep. All right. Good. Good. Okay. Well, uh, I hope, I hope our listeners really got something out of that. I know I sure, I sure did always do. Okay. So until next time, Big hug to you, Gabrielle, and to everybody else. Big hug to you. Okay. Big hug. Bye. Back. Bye.